In, re in regards to, uh, I guess, probably one of the things that I see with a lot of the younger advisors, and I, I sort of spend a lot of time uh, trying to get them to understand this, that sometimes it's your job to tell people what they don't want to hear. Sometimes it's your job um, to tell them the uncomfortable truth. Um, and when we talk about the difference between industries and professions and blah, 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 the difference between being a professional and a salesman is a salesman will tell people what they want to hear. A professional will tell them what they need to hear. Um, and, and, and once again, when you're telling people what they need to hear, you're forming a relationship. And that relationship is built on candor, honesty, trust, these sorts of things. Um, in saying that, um, you know, for, for, for some reason, a lot of people have difficulty with that. Um, you know, I've got to get the sale or I've got to do this or I've got to do that or they just can't say no to people, right? It's just like, well, you know, you're not actually helping them. Um, so I, I find that's, that's a bit of an interesting dynamic. I, I see, um, no, I see it with everyone, um, younger or older advisors. It's being able to say to a, to a client, no, um, this is what you actually need to be focusing on. Um, and I think that's a skill in itself. Well, and look, and I think there's, there's a middle ground there because there's the thing about, as you said, always wanting to say yes and not making them aware of the consequences of the decision. But then I also see advisors that overlay their own personal views mm -hmm. on someone else as to what's possible. If I listen to those who said to me what was possible to me, I yeah. would be living a very different life. So I always, and I often have clients say, come to me and they say, what should I be doing for the age and stage of life that I am? Or is this achievable for me? And I always bring it back to, look, it's not my job and I don't, it's not up to me to say what's possible for you. What's up to me is first of all, to make sure that you're making an informed decision. So if you're wanting to do X, you need to be aware of the consequences of it and to go in with your eyes wide open. And if you want to achieve why, I'm going to tell you what you need to do in order to achieve that. And then it's up to you how hard you want to work, what compromises you want to make to make the impossible possible. But, and that's where I feel like we need to be developing our skills as advisors to be that sort of coaching facilitator and to go, well, look, you have to, now for me to do that well, I have to be comfortable in my own skin to be able to say to you, look, going to be hard but this is what you can do in order to do it yeah yeah oh, look I, I agree entirely it's it's not for an advisor to say yes or no um but i think it's important that um you know they, they've got a, the, the job as an advisor is to hold the client's hand through the decision making process it's not to make the decision um and that's where a lot of people get confused with what advice is uh, advice is a process um and and what the advisor brings is you know their knowledge their skills um, and they're facilitating the, the client going through that process and then you get to the end of that process and, and the client they, They've made up their choice They've made their decision based on that process and, and they're happy with that and that's what a good advice process is It's it's not as simple as coming in and you know, I'm going to tell you whether it's going to rain next Tuesday or not um, it, That's not how it works um, okay. and, and I think I think I think your point is a very good one and you know, I've, I've, uh, I, part of my role is I've a lot of SOAs, I've met a lot of advice and, um, you know, I'm forever nabbing people for, hang on, well, why, why did you tell them to do that? Oh, well, because I thought blah, blah, blah. Well, it's not your decision, right? It's the client. You take the client through the process, they ultimately decide. Your job is to make sure they're making an informed decision. And you have to be willing to lose that client at a certain point. You know, I, I've had clients that, uh, for example, and, and it pains me so much because they're so close to achieving their goal and they say, you know, we want to be able to retire early, right? We just paid off our home. We want to get into another million dollars of debt. And I just go, but hang on. You just said you want early retirement. You're at the point now where you can retire part time. Like you don't have to. What is it about now going and getting back into debt again? And, you know, because I don't give them that free permission and I don't say, I think you're right. You worked really hard. You deserve that fantastic view. I'm the one saying to them, think about it, because in six months, you're not going to care about that view, but you will be left with the debt. And that's okay. That's the advice. That advice isn't right for everyone. And if it's not giving them the permission that they seek to go and do that, 
then that's okay. But I'm not going to facilitate them getting into a mortgage where I think that's going to be a really, really bad outcome for them at the end. You have to put that sort of, it's the same as the doctor going, well, I'm not going to give you this medication. I don't care that your mate said that it's really good, but it's going to give you a heart attack. I ain't doing it. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll get rid of a cold. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get rid of the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, we have to make sure that we don't clients don't use us as a way of self-medicating in a sense i've decided what absolutely I'm well, what, what, what's worse is clients actually use particularly young advisors they use them as um underwriting their actions right they get it and i'm forever pinning advisors on this well this wasn't your idea why are you owning it right you're not recommending doing that that's what the clients do you're not recommending it um, you know, and, and then when it all goes pear shaped, guess who they're going to come and bloom and knock on their door? Well, and with, you with, to, with their they lawyer can't. from Slow Slack and Evasive in tow. And yeah. that happens in every profession. As an accountant, you know, I had clients pushing back on me because I wouldn't claim these great tax deductions that their creative accountant friends said um, that they should be entitled to. It happens everywhere. So it's about, especially those younger advisors, recognizing that it happens everywhere. But you have to know your stuff well enough and be confident enough to be able to go and say no. Say, so, well, yeah. then fine, go to that creative accountant, but I'm not going to be a part of this. Mortgage brokers fair, it's the same thing. Every single person pushes their borrowing capacity to its limits. And then they get annoyed. I had one lady who, had, who was earning 100000 of income and then was upset that I told her she couldn't get a million dollar loan. And I said, even if you get the million dollar loan, I wouldn't be letting you because you would financially destroy yourself. You wouldn't have money left for anything else. But the other thing is you've got to be careful there is that same woman, right? When, when it all went, when she bought the bloody investment property in Shitsville uh, because the mine was there, but then the mine shut down and the, the house wasn't worth a million bucks anymore. It was worth 300,000. She would have ran at you and said, well, I shouldn't have even got that loan anyway. I couldn't even afford it. Right? And, and, and this, this is what people do once, once they're under pressure and, you know, things have gone bad, all the other stuff goes out the window. Um, you know, I've seen it. I've seen it a number of times in my career and it's not pleasant. And as an advisor, you have to be, you have to have in the back of your mind, you always want to give people the benefit of the doubt, but you have to be looking at the person sitting across you and say, this person's going to attack me. Um, I need to make sure that I've done my processes properly and my documentation and my paperwork support that I've done my job. Um, because if you, if you have any sort of career and you don't get challenged, um, you've just been dumbass lucky. That would, that would be my take. Well, but, money uh, changes everyone. Anyone who's been divorced will tell you that. <laughs> That's right. Hence, I'm coming back as a divorce lawyer. So, um, slow, slack, and evasive legal firm, but uh, make divorce lawyer specialist. I'll make a monster. I will have that big house on the hill. <laughs>